Welcome back. Uh, now, we will continue our discussion uh, with concepts related to surface tension, which we have been doing now. Uh, we have uh, in a very slow, but uh, in a very narrative fashion learned quite a few things. We now understand what is the difference between surface tension and interfacial tension or surface energy and interfacial energy. Then we went on uh, to define or understand uh, what can be the configurations, possible configurations if you dispense a liquid on a solid surface, a flat solid surface. And we understand that depending on the relative values of the surface energies of, of the liquid and the solid, you can in principle have two primary uh, configurations and the configurations are either complete weighting and partial weighting. Then uh, within this regime of partial weighting, if the liquid is water, then it is possible either to have an equilibrium contact angle lower than 90 degree or higher than 90 degree. And depending on the on that magnitude, the surface is conventionally termed as hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So, hydrophilic if it is less than 90 degree, hydrophobic if it is more than 90 degree. Subsequently, we also understood what is the definition of spreading coefficient. In fact, spreading coefficient gives us a qualitative idea about the stability of a film straight away, because a negative value of spreading coefficient implies that by creating a film on a surface, one has in fact added more energy to the system and anything that has high energy is unstable. Whereas, a positive spreading coefficient shows that a film formation is favored. After that, we moved on to another interesting area and that is weighting on a structured surface. And we understood that uh, on a structured surface, two different configurations are possible. Uh, this I am sure is new to some of you, two different configurations are possible and those configurations can be either the gas Wenzel state of weighting, where uh, the liquid floods the protrusions or the, uh, the liquid conformally adheres to the boundary of the structured substrate or one can under certain special conditions particularly when the roughness is very, very high one can have a different type of weighting uh, which is known as the Cassie state of weighting where uh, the air pockets there are air pockets entrapped within the substrate protrusions which the liquid fails to dislodge. And therefore, the composite the, the contact line is now a composite liquid solid air uh, contact line. Of course, Cassie state of weighting uh, sort of leads to maximum uh, contact angle, effective contact angle, as well as the adhesion is sort of least. And therefore, this is uh, sort of a necessary condition uh, for. Uh, super hydrophobicity. Behavior of course, I have not yet defined what is a super hydrophobic surface, super hydrophobic behavior ought to achieve self cleaning property. Uh, we also look from a very simple equation that there is a critical roughness only above which Cassie state of weighting is possible. So, if you have if one asks you that you have let us say different type of structures on the same material like these two structures and we will do a lot of these structuring. So, what type of structure this and that we will learn not a big deal at this moment. So, qualitatively if one expects or tells you to comment on the weighting regimes that you are likely to have. Well, without knowing the relative values of uh, gamma s, gamma l and theta e, nothing should be commented. But if one asks you to make a back of the envelope comment, you may say oh, well it looks like on this I am more likely to get Wenzel regime and it might be possible to to get a Cassie 
state of wetting. It is also possible that even this roughness is not adequate and you end up getting a uh, Wenzel wetting. But if at all one can achieve a Cassie state of wetting, it has to be on this one. Other way of looking at it is if somehow the wetting regime is Cassie on this particular case, it has to be Cassie on this particular case. It is not possible. This is something that you can surely say. If the material remains same, the periodic remains same to have Cassie regime on 1 and Wenzel regime on 2, that is not possible. Okay. Now, uh, I have used a term uh, several times, you might have also heard it uh, at different places and that is a super hydrophobic surface. So, let us try to find out what this is. So, you now know that if a surface on which the water contact angle is more than 90 degree is a hydrophobic surface is termed pedagogically or conventionally as a hydrophobic surface. Now, what is super hydrophobic surface? Before I can define super hydrophobic surface accurately to you, let me uh, I need to highlight another critical aspect and what is known as the contact angle hysteresis. Suppose you have a drop of a liquid which can be water resting on a flat horizontal surface. Important thing to note is all the drawings we have all, all the sketches we have made so far actually talk about a horizontal surface. Now, suppose I tilt this surface by an angle let us say alpha. What do you expect? The moment you tilt the surface, there is in fact a component g sin alpha component of gravity g sin alpha that is acting on this drop. And if you just do a recall of what is the definition of a fluid, the definition of a fluid is that it deforms under shear stress however small the amount may be. So, even if alpha is very small that corresponds to sin alpha to be very very small, but g sin alpha is non-zero. in principle the drop should start to move. I will write down there is a certain very interesting aspect. Right. In reality, something different happens. Often one sees that you really have to tilt the surface by some value of alpha, right? some significant value of alpha only above which the drop starts to move. If So, there is sort of a critical value of alpha. or I would say a minimum alpha by which the surface needs to be tilted, then only the drop moves. So, let us think now of a situation that for a space. So, this is how is it possible? Because you have a non-zero force acting on the liquid and somehow it is not flowing. So, what really happens? This is this is a very simple observation, I am sure you have seen uh, rain water sticking to vertical windows and that is exactly this situation. 
there are uh, several issues that needs to be highlighted. This is something a very, very active area of research in microfluidics and things like that. We will not go into all the detail, but I will highlight to you the uh, key features of what happens. So, one of the important things or interesting thing is, suppose you have tilted the surface by a value alpha and this alpha is less than alpha c. Unfortunately, unlike uh, Young's equation, there is no clear formula that can correlate alpha c yet. That directly correlates alpha c to what gamma l, gamma s and gamma s l and maybe also on roughness on a structured surface, it is not there. I am coming to several important things now, this is a very practical observation. So, you have tilted, but the degree of tilt is not adequate so that the drop starts to move. So, what would you expect? The first thing that you will expect that on a flat surface you have been drawing a hemispherical drop which is in fact axisymmetric. So, if you consider a axis about the midpoint the center it is axisymmetric. The first thing that will happen and in prince in fact what I did not highlight it was so obvious that this is theta e on both the sides. But the moment you tilt it and the drop is still stationary, what happens is it sort of loses its axisymmetry shape and the two angles on the left and the right, I mean left and right is not the right thing to discuss because if you tilt it in this direction, it is going to be the, the geometry is going to be the different one, the other one, they are going to be uh, different. So, if you now superpose the equilibrium shape, you can see this angle which is marked as theta r, y r I am coming is less than theta e. On the other hand, this angle, this is marked as theta a is actually greater than theta e. Now, what are these reason why one is using a and r? Theta a is termed as the advancing contact angle. and this is known as the receding contact angle, simply because once the drop starts to move, the drop will be advancing in this direction and it will be receding in this direction. So, one typically, so uh, let me now formally define what is contact angle hysteresis. It is the difference between theta a and theta r at the point when the drop starts to move. Okay. So, this is a very, very important parameter the contact angle hysteresis. Uh, while we are happy to learn the concept of contact angle hysteresis, we need to also understand uh, two more critical aspects associated with this. So, I will redraw the shape of a tilted drop. So, this now all of you understand. The surface over which it was resting is tilted. It has a finite angle with the horizontal, therefore, there is a net uh, force g sin alpha. 
question to ask is why the drop still does not move so what is holding it back uh, well there are very many contradicting conjectures but this phenomena of there is a driving force but the drop still remains stuck to its original or stuck along the contours of its original three phase contact line is briefly referred to as pinning. Uh, we will talk about evaporative drying of a drop where you will see that pinning can happen even in case of a horizontal uh, in case of a retracting drop on a horizontal surface you may not have to always tilt, but the it is termed as pinning. So, as if the contact line is pinned to the surface. So, this is a very very interesting uh, observation. Uh, so, in order to achieve uh, a self cleaning surface let us say where you would like your liquid to roll off, you need to have very low strength of pinning and a low strength of pinning necessitates that the contact angle hysteresis has to be low. So, this is the appropriate time to define what is a super hydrophobic surface. Again, it is partly based on convention, uh, there is no geni genuine reason why the numbers have to be followed as this. So, a super hydrophobic surface is a surface where the equilibrium contact angle is greater than uh, 150 degree and the contact angle hysteresis is less than 10 degree. Only then it falls into the uh, category of a super hydrophobic surface. I will give you a very uh, exciting example from again from nature. It turns out that lotus leaf and rose petal both exhibit uh, water contact angle roughly of 155 degree, so it is 150 degree plus. However, so but as a super hydrophobic surface lotus leaf is much more famous and popular than a rose petal. Is it because people did not know? It is not that. It turns out rose petal has almost infinite contact angle hysteresis. So, you tilt it and drop simply does not move. What is the reason again research is going on? Probably it is related to the structures, the difference in the nature of the structures. In fact, this is also a very interesting um, example that you have very high equilibrium contact angle, but the contact angle hysteresis is, is very very high. And now all of you understand what it means that the strength of the pinning force is very high on rose petal. Therefore, rose petal is does not qualify to be a super hydrophobic surface. It does not qualify to be a super hydrophobic surface, while lotus leaf is a very very widely used super hydrophobic surface. Uh, coming back to, uh, so while we agree to this uh, clear definition of what is a super hydrophobic surface, so we understand theta e has to be more than 150 degree, uh, equilibrium uh, the contact angle hysteresis has to be low. Uh, it is also logical to expect that uh, why Cassie state of wetting is so popular from the standpoint of a super hydrophobic surface, it is simply because of the fact that uh, since the drop of liquid or water is almost floating on the substrate protrusions, when you tilt it, it is very likely that it will start to move or roll very easily as compared to here where the liquid is actually, liquid has actually gone in and is stuck up within the substrate groups and it is very likely that the pinning in Wenzel state of weighting. might exceed that on the flat surface very likely. Okay. So, that is uh, why from the standpoint of super hydrophobic and self cleaning surfaces uh, the Cassy state of wetting is desired. Uh, it is likely uh, that uh, 
mm, the pinning is going to be lower and that is going to lead to lower value of uh, contact angle hysteresis. But there is uh, more to that I mean in fact research is still going on it I mean one does not really have a very convincing answer. Probably rose petal also exhibits uh, Cassie state of wetting, but uh, it exhibits very high contact angle hysteresis. Probably as I told that uh, in the initial slides that this is a course that is very open ended research is still going on, but this is not clear not yet answered. There is uh, another very interesting issue uh, that is associated to what we have discussed so far and that is we have been mentioning that uh, once uh, the drop sort of exceeds the magnitude of the contact angle hysteresis or sort of. Uh, so, what happens I mean as you tilt I mean there is in fact an imbalance along the horizontal imbalance in surface energy along the horizontal component of surface tension and when the magnitude of this imbalance exceeds the strength of the pinning force in fact the drop uh, starts to move. This is the word I have deliberately used to be honest. Another very important question at this point of time is what is the nature of the movement? Does the drop slide or does it roll? Back of the envelope expectation is higher is the level of hydrophobicity. This is sort of an intuitive answer that may be for a hydrophilic drop the motion is sliding, for a hydrophobic surface probably the motion is rolling, but it is difficult to say. This is again a question that is still open, the question is clearly open. Uh, you might now uh, add your concept of Cassie and Wenzel states of weighting to the discussion and you may argue that it is very logical that if the weighting state is Cassie probably you would see rolling and probably here uh, it is very difficult to say whether it is sliding because one thing on one hand the pinning sort of increases and I have no option, but to put this question marks because it is not yet known. So, see such a simple system, such a simple thing that is a drop uh, moving on a tilted surface, which we encounter every now and then, every now and then we encounter this has so many very interesting scientific aspects associated with that and some of them are associated with the uh, surface tension, some of them are related to pinning which is uh, which everybody now sort of agrees based on uh, experimental observations that pinning exists, because there is an instrument contact angle goniometer which we will discuss partly as a part of this course, where you can clearly tilt the platform on which a flat surface is resting and you can see that the droplet does not move. So, there is pinning, but what exactly causes the pinning whether it is a deformation uh, of the contact line due to its vertical component is something I just need to highlight which I did not talk about yet or there are some other effects like a local molecular interaction or some difference in pressure it is not fully known. Just the way it is also not fully known uh, when the drop actually starts to move on a, on a tilted surface whether the nature of the motion is sliding or rolling. Uh, under what condition or to put it very specifically, what exactly is the transition probably uh, both the uh, things happen, but where exactly the transition takes place 
from a uh, sliding to rolling is something that is yet to be fully resolved. One more thing uh, I need to highlight before I end this particular lecture is we have in order to obtain the Young's equation made a balance of the horizontal components of forces, but what happens to the vertical component? There is in fact a vertical component of the liquid surface tension and which is gamma L sin theta E. This is again a very, very interesting uh, area of research because this tries to pull out the surface, right? This is acting outward. Uh, for a rigid surface, in fact, if the substrate is rigid, this is too less to cause any deformation. But there are a lot of work that is going on and which suggests that if you look into the weighting on a uh, soft surface or a, or a surface that is not very stiff, it is likely that this might cause some very minor deformation, this horizontal component might cause some very minor deformation. Uh, that, that is sort of again a counter, uh, a sort of an intuitive expectation on a soft surface like uh, that of a gel maybe. Uh, but uh, a lot of research is actually going on and uh, I should not comment on that because this is again a very open area. Uh, I will put the question what happens or what is the effect of the horizontal component, uh, the vertical component of surface tension at the contact line. So, these are things that you need to think and you can search in the literature what is the latest state of art and find out yourself. Thank you very much.